Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. It's been a while. Uh, just real quick. So, um, work's been insane, and I had some uh, pretty significant uh, health issues occurring with a family member. So, uh, in those cases, unfortunately, uh, the uh, YouTube videos take a back seat. Uh, the other part of this is, is look, uh, I'm glad I've got so many message about where I've been, but you know, we don't really make money off YouTube, it's for fun, right? So if I want to make one video a month, I'll do that. If I want to do, you know, one video a day, we'll do that. And, you know, my primary reason for this whole thing is just to have fun, do some food challenges, relax. Um, I also wanted to have a, a uh, pool to build a client base if I wanted to do online dieting, things like that. And, you know, I really can't take on more than five people a month which I charge $100 a month, weekly updates, everything, super hands-on, everything you need. A lot of time and effort into that. So, you know, I can't really take any more than five people right now, and, and I'm happy with that, and the channel's fun, but, you know, it is what it is. So sorry for the delay. Uh, actually, it was concerning my mom had some pretty serious, uh, my super-duper healthy mom had some pretty serious health issues. So, um, pretty, pretty significant. So it was, it was a rough month. But all is good and on a better path now. Important topic today. What we want to do, is, and uh, the title was also a little clickbait, bodybuilder, blood work. I'm not a freaking bodybuilder, right? I'm a guy that wants to get big and get strong. Um, I don't even like to refer to myself as a bodybuilder. Um, the title's a bit embarrassing, really. Um, so anyways, let's talk about blood work. Because if you are deep into this endeavor, natural or enhanced, and I will say this, even if you're completely natural and you compete, very important you get your blood work done. Uh, maybe not as often, right? Uh, but I think it's very important. And you know, if you're getting older like me, I'm 35 years old now, I, you know, I think if you're really trying to do this thing, it's good just from a performance standpoint and, and overall blood work is good, but also just from a health standpoint, it, it, it's a good thing. So I wanna to talk to you about how my blood works right now. Just got this done this past month. Uh, I usually get mine done at least every six months, sometimes every quarter. And we're gonna talk through some things, some pretty serious things, and then some things uh, that have uh, screwed me up a little bit in the past. So let's run through. Now, there's nothing top secret to look at here. So, um, you know, this is what we're looking at. This, this is my lipid. I don't know if you can see it. my uh, lipid profile. Let, let's start there, okay? Um, triglycerides, 81, okay? We want that below 150. I would tell everyone you want that below 100. You know, when you look at your, your triglycerides and your HDL, those in combination will give you kind of a good hint if you're at immediate risk for a cardiac event. Um, so I really like to keep those triglycerides as low as I can be. 81 is actually high for me. Uh, I've been anywhere from 40 uh, to at the most 90. Um, HDL, mine always runs a little low. I struggle with it. It's 36. I'd really like that over 40, preferably over 50. But it's always been lower, uh, even when I was lighter body weight. So I'd like to try to work on getting that up. Uh, VLDL, which is the, the higher particle size LDL, is, is quite low at 16, which is very good. Uh, my LDL cholesterol, which is always a bit higher, I struggle with it, is 116. We'd like that under 100. Mine's 116, something I always, you know, always fight with. My estimated risk for coronary artery disease, which is cool, they give you this. I, I, I pay for all the extras when I get blood work. I'll use uh, private MD labs and walk-in clinic. You can do all kinds of stuff, which we'll get to some cool things here. Uh, mine is 0 0.9, which puts me at an extremely low risk uh, for you know some coronary artery disease or cardiac event anytime soon. Um, let's look at CBC. I'm not going to keep flipping my computer around, but I do want you to see everything is standard on the up and up. Um, all is good. Really nothing of note in, in the CBC. I will say hematocrit, especially if you're an enhanced athlete, you want to keep your eye on. I know some guys that are enhanced and they dump blood every six weeks. They have no reason to. You know, me, I, I would never have to do that. My hematocrit never goes over 51. Uh, I mean, it never does. 
Um, really stays right between 40 and 51. Good thing the monitor, but don't just start dumping blood every six weeks. Now, hey, it's great to donate, right? Great. Save lives. But ther don't therapeutically dump blood constantly if you don't know your number. That makes no sense at all. Um, everything else is standard up and down. And really, regardless of what you're taking, you, you shouldn't see much difference um, in most of the, the others in the uh, CBC. Now, uh, this is the part I want to get into because uh, I'll tell you what. If you're in the bodybuilding world, strength athlete, whatever you are, go to Google and type in high creatinine levels bodybuilder. You will literally find thousands. I, I'm not I'm not kidding. Thousands of threads. You know, I'm 20 years old, never use any steroids. Creatinine is high. Doc, doctor says uh, I'm end stage kidney failure over and over and over nonstop. Um, I myself have always had a higher creatinine creatinine level. That's not the same as creatine. It's a it's a muscle waste product. Anyways, you can Google all about creatinine, okay? I'm not gonna go over all that in this. But in general, if you're lifting weights, you have more muscle, um, you can read about it on your own, your level will be higher. Mine has always been higher. From the time I was 20 to 35, it's been between 1.3 and 1.65. Always has been. Uh, in fact, I have a horror story. When I was 22, it was 1.65. Uh, which would be end stage kidney failure with all my other blood work being normal. I was into the hospital uh, for dialysis, which I completely didn't need. And fortunately, a neurologist inter interjected it and we did some more tests and he said, your kidneys are uh, in pristine health. <clears throat> That's where I sit today. So let's go through some of this and, and let's talk more about this kidney thing. Uh, my creatinine here is 1.47. Now keep in mind that is also taking lisinopril. I take a very low dose, but it does, you know, anywhere from 10 to 30 percent increase your creatinine levels. So if you're on lisinopril, um, keep that of of note. My bun, which is also another sort of kidney health uh, function indicator, is is only nine. The reason why it's so low, that relates also to dehydration and, and protein intake. Um, I, I'll typically fast for 16 full hours before my test, so that's why that just drops down. I'm hydrated, and you know I haven't had any protein within 16 hours, and generally the day before, I'll cut my intake to 100 grams, just to give a more realistic uh, look. So, one thing I would tell you, because I mean, I mean, there, there's kids uh, borderline, you know, f freak out mode, hysterical online because their creatinine is is 1.5 and 1.4. Now my advice is, isn't, oh, you're a bodybuilder. Don't worry about that. No, 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 not at all. This is my advice and any good doctor will tell you this, any doctor. And I've seen a, a uh, uh, I'm sorry, not a neurologist, a nephrologist go off on primary care doctors because they're, they're just handled this poorly. You always have to look at the individual as a whole. So what does that mean? If all your blood work, top to bottom, is beautiful, electrolytes, liver values, all your other blood work, top to bottom, lipid profile, but yet your creatinine is 1.5, um, that likely means you're not an end stage kidney failure, right? You also look at creatinine over time, uh, not just a one time reading. The problem is some of these primary care doctors will see that number in a muscular 190 pound individual and they'll, they'll tell them you're, you're in kidney failure. Well, all their blood work is perfect, up and down the line. And that is absolutely insane, completely insane. So this is what I do and this is how you can double check. I do a couple things. One is I do a spot urinalysis and you can pay for this uh, right online. It will check the protein in your urine. I also do the microscopic um, examination. So it, it does cost a little bit more, but it, it's not much. So they'll show everything from the pH, the appearance, protein, glucose, ketones, if there's blood in your urine, up and down. Um, all my values were completely normal. Uh, protein in your urine, slight amounts can be normal, but having protein in your urine is one of the first signs that there could be some sort of kidney uh, issue occurring. So I would always recommend that. I also paid for it. Now this is a pain. I, not everyone needs to or should do this. 
I did the 24 hour uh, urine screen. So that will also give you a creatinine clearance, um, which mine was completely normal. Now, here's another great test. Great. If you're a little paranoid like I am and you have one number that's a little off, if it's your kidney number and you're in the bodybuilding world, fabulous test. And it's perfect because it's not affected by you know protein intake, working out, muscle mass, and that is cystatin C. C Y S T A T I N and then the letter C. Not all labs you can do this test. And it is, I'm telling you right now, a creatinine test on its own is like eleven to twenty dollars. Cystatin C is between $115 to $250 for that one test. It is expensive, but it is an awesome test. If you have a little bit of a high creatinine, you do the urine test, but you still want another layer of certainty, um, which you pretty much have from, from urine tests if they're clear, just pay for it. Get cystatin C done. Awesome test. So for cystatin C, you should be, be between 0.53, 0.95, Mine is 0.61, so really right on where it should be, the lower the better with that. And that way you can evaluate all of your kidney function without just freaking out over the one number. So just uh, that applies most to our, our bodybuilding, powerlifting friends, especially at the heavier body weight. A creatinine of 1.8 could be normal for a 300 pound bodybuilder. It also could not be normal. So you need to check it out. All right, let's work through a few other things. Um, fasting uh, blood sugar is 87. Usually it's, it's always between 75 and 85-ish. So that's pretty, pretty normal. I like to get my uric acid tested. It's more for, for a gout, people with gout, but it's also an inflammatory marker. Uh, so uh, mine is 4.7, normal is 3.7 to 8.6. So very good there. Um, like I said, my bun was normal, uh, EGFR was normal, um, all my electrolytes, sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride, all that normal up and down the line. ALT and AST, these are the primary uh, liver function tests, were at 32 and 42 respectively, both completely in the, uh, in the normal range. My total cholesterol was 168. Don't get too caught up in your total cholesterol. I'd rather have my HDL be 60 and my total cholesterol be higher. So don't get too caught up in that. Now, another test. Again, this is not cheap. But the other test I had um, is C-reactive protein. Now, primarily, this is a driver to tell you what risk you're at, you know, for a, a cardiac event, some form of cardiac uh, event, and actually says relative risk for future cardiac event. It's, an, it's a marker of inflammation. The other thing, secondarily, is they're finding this does correlate to kidney issues. As this number goes up, we see some evidence that it relates to kidney function. So where are we? Uh, we are at 0.8. Eight seven. Um, typically, if you're below a one, you're at an, an extremely low uh, chance for some sort of uh, cardiovascular event. Average is between one and three. Really, don't want to be over three, four, five. Once you're over five, that's uh, uh, better start planning uh, your funeral because uh, you're you're probably gonna have a heart attack. I like to be you know below ones where you want to be. I'm at 0.87. I'd prefer to be around 0.5. I don't think I'll ever be able to get lower than 0.5 just from normal living. TSH is 2.7. I do take a low dose of thyroid medication. That there's thyroid issues running our family. Um, usually it's between 1.5 and 2.5. So it's a little higher than normal, but. Yeah, I, I'm you know not worried about that at all. Like I said, really cool. Good, good test to get done there. Uh, kidney one is always a big one. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. Thanks, thanks for watching. We will talk soon.